First thing I'm going to do is take down this old table. I'm going to be using some of the parts from this table in the new one. Fortunately, it's just screwed together, so not a problem. Wow, this is a really dirty job. Step two. I gotta prepare all of my stock. Now I'm gonna prep the stock first by joining the two sides on the joiner. So I could just as easily rip my stock on the table saw or the track saw, but the band saw is the safer choice. I use a long MDF bed and feed the boards continuously to avoid snipe. I recently built a new cart for my Pana router. At first it seems like a pretty low height, it's only about two feet tall, but there's a reason for that. When I take the Pana router cart over to my assembly table, the table of the Pana router is the same height. So that means I can use my assembly table as an outfeed table or some sort of a support actually for my pieces that I'm working on on the Pana router. I'll be putting one half inch tenons on my stock that's about one and a quarter inches thick and three inches wide. I'll be using a two inch follower template and the half inch router bit. I'll be using this centering jig to um, determine just where the board should go. So I know my board is three inches, so I just simply need to put this at three inches in the back, line that up with my mark, okay, three inches, and you can see that that will put my center line dead center in the middle of my three inch stock. For the height, I just simply take the stock and get the height on here. So when I do the tenons, I'll be putting these pieces here. I want to do the mortises first so that I can fit the tenons into the mortise and hone in on exactly where that should be. I marked which end I wanted to do those on. You can see that my table here works great as a support base. I'll get this tight with the front, clamped in firmly there. I always like two clamps, so put a second clamp on that end. It's really locked in well. I can bring this, my router bit, up to the wood, and I wanted to have one and a quarter inch tenons. So my mortise is going to go just a hair deeper than that. And the follower, I'm using a 10 millimeter follower that slides in the slot quite easily. Uh, it'll roll along, it's a bearing guide. And I'm gonna do a test piece first, just because it's always a good idea to do a test piece. For the tenons, I'll be using my test piece again that I've already uh, got to the same thickness and width as my, or close to the same width as my uh, other pieces. And this is just to see if that tenon will fit nicely into the mortise. So the guide says for a half inch router bit, and if I want a one half inch tenon, I'll be using a 22 millimeter bearing guide. Now I set it to the widest setting possible so that I can always come in closer on that if I need to. The advantage of having a test piece is that I don't have to bring that huge piece of work, work up to here. Up to, um, I can leave it all clamped in. You can see that my tenon is a little bit too big yet, quite a bit actually. 
So I can just pull the bearing guide in. There's marks up here at the top. I'm going to bring it in one step. Just a hair too big. Since I have my marks up here, I know I can take it just a small bit in from there. Not much. Perfect. Okay, I have a confession to make. I realized after I did the first tenon that it's not actually centered. And I could have seen that quite easily if I had just looked at where I had things lined up. You can see that this edge over here hangs a little bit farther over than this edge. If I now moved things to center, it wouldn't work. The tenons would be centered in my uh, cross pieces. This way, I can still line them up. I just have to be careful when I do it to ensure that I have the same wide end up against the fence. I can't just spin the board around. I need to go end for end on the table so that I have the same wide end. It's still centered vertically because of the thickness of the board. When it came time to put the shelves in, I found that my plywood that I had was about three quarters of an inch to an inch too short to span the length and be supported by my shelf supports. Well, I looked for a board stretch and I just couldn't find one anywhere. Rather than resting the shelves directly on the shelf support, I've added a little ledge to the inside and made it kind of like a rabbit so that the edge of the shelf will come up against the edge of the outside support and be even like if this was an extension of the shelf, my own kind of board stretcher. So those will go along the side. I'm gonna be, uh, I made a kind of a half lap type thing where the side pieces will hang on top of these uh, back and front pieces for the shelving. I'll be screwing the shelving supports in on the back side of the casing and on the sides. I'm also going to be adding plywood to either side if I can find stuff that fits right and also to the back and that'll add a lot to the stability and rigidity of the case. With my shelving set in place uh, against the back side, I can make the marks for where these cutouts need to be on the back spacer part. I do have my spacers in on the sides so that I can make sure it's centered just where I want it to be. I've decided that my shelf height needs to be about 17 inches to the bottom of anything that sticks out or hangs down. Um, that's because I'm wanting to put some rather tall items on the bottom that are going to be a little bit heavier and they need that space. I've marked 17 inches on kind of a story stick here and I used that to determine 17 inches all the way around. Marked that same exact height without even using a tape measure. Now I just need to pre-drill and then screw those into place with a couple of shorter screws. Now, I very rarely use screws except for where I have to. This one uses a lot of mortise and tenons. But in this case, if I use screws, I can easily re, uh, place, reposition those shelves later on. Yeah, even the screws are reused. <laughs> Screwing down the shelf to the supports will add some structure to my rolling cart and keep things in square. And these extra board extenders work great. Putting the shelves in before I put the sides on makes this whole process a whole lot easier. I've also notched the back to fit in place. On the front edge of the box, I've left the shelf ba set back from the sides so that if I decide to put a set of doors on later on, it'll butt up against that back piece and um, seal things up well. 
This is for the back of the cart. And like I said, I'm using scrap materials. This plywood has some pretty serious holes in it. We're able to avoid those, but that means that the direction of the grain is going to be going sideways. Traditionally, it should go up and down, but it's the back. It's a shop cart. I don't care. It's using old materials. So we're being resourceful. We're going to cut that using our track saw. be putting the back on now and like with the shelves we'll pre-drill and just drill it on screw it on we've already got two screws in holding it in place for us and we're also making sure that the screws don't go into the end grain of the crossbars we want it in the vertical piece that comes here The top front of my cabinet has just a small overhang. I can ensure that I have everything on straight by laying the cabinet on its back and setting the, the top on my table. The clamps that I have on the tabletop are to help hold these strips in place that I put just as a decorative edge trim just because I happen to have them around. And it uh, also covers up the press board for the melamine. I'm using a melamine scrap piece that I had that I cut just to width. I didn't want to go too much farther than this eighth of an inch or so reveal because I didn't want my table to get too wide and it's not like a normal countertop. So I'm going to be screwing the top in now with the side off. I'll be able to just drill and screw the top in place. So I've got the side clamped on with these clamps here and held into place. I know where it is on both sides so that it ends up the way I want it to be. I'm going to just use finishing nails to attach the sides. So here's the first phase of my outfeed table, my modular workbench. It's all in place and I think it made a pretty good improvement. Phase two will be just over the top of the workbench. Uh, a similar one that'll be on the other, opposite side. That'll take up the space behind the outfeed table where I have my vacuum and dust collector. So check in next time for our video on the mobile dust collector station.